I'm, I'm near Montreal, Quebec, and uh, food in <laughs> Quebec usually is amazing. Here's my uh, breakfast. It's a crepe with fruits, two poached eggs, and coffee. My trailer is empty, I'm waiting for a new load. This is uh, near Montreal, Quebec. It's a small truck stop called Petro T. And that's it. I'm headed with these questions about the squeaking belt in my power steering. So today we're gonna do a instructional video and then there will be a test after this. So guys and gals, please pay attention. And when somebody says, when somebody says that they work as a mechanic and then they ask me about the belt and the power steering, uh, I don't have a problem with the guy being a mechanic, but that probably, uh, the experience probably dates back to the early 19th century. So now I'm going to finally show you how power steering works in most modern trucks. So first of all, Usually there's a driver involved, right? And unless he or she is busy with a prayer and a sleeper. Uh, for that, usually they activate the cruise control and then go pray in the sleeper. But most of, most of the time the driver sits here. There's a seat and there's this thing that looks like a pancake. It's called a steering wheel, right? And steering wheel is hidden under these plastic uh, covers just to confuse DOT inspectors and MTO inspectors. And we can catch it over again over here. That's the end of the steering wheel. You see it is connected with this wicked twisted U-bolt with this shaft. And so far you see we don't have, between that pancake known as a steering wheel and this part, we don't have any belts yet, right? But uh, keep your shirt uh, on, we're still doing uh, the exploration, right? So we have this, and it goes, 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 still no belts, and oh my, it connects over here to this box. And what is this? This is a power steering box, right? This is what amplifies the movement so that, because most modern drivers, they're not as uh, beefy and muscular as the guys in the uh, uh, end of 19th century, right? So it's all hydraulic uh, assist, right? And so when I turn the wheel, this thing starts turning and it turns inside and you see all these hoses in here, right? They go in here. That's the power steering reservoir, right? And that's where the liquid comes from. And I think there must be a pump somewhere there. But, so the movement goes in there, and then it's connected, you see the, these uh, levers, right? They're connected in here, and those are connected to the part of the steering wheel, just like in a regular car. But, it's all metal, no belts, okay? So when there's no belts, a belt cannot be uh, squeaking in my truck. And basically what's happening, it's the... Uh, actually, I did talk to the Mac dealer about this. And uh, I sat in the passenger seat and the guy went for a couple of... Did a couple of donuts inside the parking lot and he says, that's normal. When you turn, there's pressure in this and it starts uh, making that noise. Now, the rest of the video uh, will have little to do with uh, trucking because this is the weekend, right? And I got uh, stuck in Montreal again. Uh, they didn't have find me a load on Friday, and so if you're if you're only interested in, in trucking, you can stop the the video and we'll uh, resume our regular programming when I have a load. Uh, if you're interested in how I spent my Saturday, keep watching. First of all, I did my research uh, on the day before. I wanted to find um, uh, somewhere to go with my camera and shoot 
you know, some birds or something like some wildlife. And when I did, uh, when I Google uh, wild, uh, bird watching Montreal, um, a certain island popped up on my uh, radar called Saint Bernard, Saint Bernard Island, and um, like there was a couple of other places, but they were too far away from me. And the Saint Bernard uh, is only quote unquote uh, 18 kilometers or 12 miles. And the problem is that this truck stop, you know, is very busy. So there was uh, some kind of a market in here. People were selling, you know, all kinds of stuff. That's why that parking is reserved. I think they are coming back uh, tomorrow. That's diesel pumps over there. And, but that's the entrance over here. But there's a Tim Hortons in there. And the traffic here is like crazy. There's all these dump trucks coming through, you know, pickup trucks. It's a very busy and it's industrial area and so I really didn't want to drop my trailer even though these guys over here they allow you to drop your trailer uh, you just need to you just need to go inside and give them the license plate you know register right tell them the company um, company name stuff like that but first of all I didn't feel comfortable leaving the my expensive overpriced Fontaine magnitude 55 ton in here even though I have this uh, ridiculous lock I can put on a, on a, somewhere, I cannot reach it, but it's like a small lock that I can put on a, a red uh, glad hand on the trailer, but I mean, who are we kidding, if somebody, all you need is a couple of some plies or something, right? Uh, and, uh, and then the second reason I want to drive my truck to this park, because it's all a residential area, and if anybody's familiar with Montreal, uh, there's like no trucks, you know, signs, no trucks everywhere. You know, I didn't want to get a ticket, especially on a day off. And my laptop died, you know, I've been having some trouble with my 12 volt um, uh, ports here. So only one is working instead of, there's two in here on the dash, but the, they're like blown, or probably fuses blown. I tried to replace them, uh, didn't work. So now I have only one. And that one only works when the laptop is in the sleeper, when the laptop is shut off and when the engine is running. You know, I don't want to run the engine. Anyway, so my laptop died. I couldn't update my logbook, right, to start driving. And last but not least, uh, so reason one was that it was, I thought somebody would steal the trailer. Reason two was there's no parking uh, and no trucks anywhere over there. Yeah, and the reason three is that, uh, actually reason to no parking, and reason three that uh, no trucks. And so I decided to call uh, a taxi cab, and I tried to look for a regular taxi cab, because this is a suburb, this is not actual Montreal, right? Montreal is on the other side of there, because that's like an island, right? I'm, uh, I'm like southwest, and it's, you know, it's a huge metropolitan area, right? like you know like new york or chicago well smaller but still there's lots of small towns and it was uh, kind of difficult to find a taxi cab and then i even look at the rental place even that one is like you have two kilometers away you know like one and a half miles away and i didn't know if uh, that would make sense so anyways i try to call uber because i have the app i am registered and they take debit cards credit cards right and so I take Uber, and when I'm in the truck, I try twice, it, and the, both times they said no cars available. And then I already decided to go in, inside and register, uh, because there was no other way out. But I, one last time I decided to get the Uber app open near that building, because that's like at the major intersection, like here I'm Indian territory, right? There's some guys there painting their trucks over there. Hold on, now it's gonna start beeping because I have low air. I wanna, I wanna close the right window. Those guys are getting too loud. And they got to my left with a super powerful D13 Volvo power. Shut up! I hate this alarm. You know, one of these days I'm gonna find a uh, Limonka, you know, Limonka F1 and put it in there. 
So anyway, so it worked. It worked when I tried to open the Uber app from uh, near the building, near the main building over there. And turns out, that, so Montreal is like that way, right? And when that guy showed up, he told me that, he says, all Uber drivers over here, they are sitting near the airport, you know? They don't want to go this far. Uh, but the, the airport is not too far from here. So I, um, he, took my, he took my order and was here, like it took him only 10 minutes. He was here and it cost me about 35 bucks Canadian. To, uh, we went on the freeway, it's a bit longer, but it was, I think it was fast, so it was like 20 kilometers, with 14 miles, it was 35 bucks, right? Um, and I did not think it through, you know? So basically, yeah, where I went, I went to this park, right? The St. Bernard Park. Uh, and one thing I didn't think, think through is that it was difficult to get an Uber over here, right? And I'm pretty much just south of the airport. And now we, I took the car, and the guy took me to um, to the island over there. And I'm thinking, and you know, only later when I was leaving, I'm thinking, wait a second, how do I get an Uber over here? And, but just to let me show you where I went. By the way, here's the printout just to show you that I'm not lying about the distance. That's the guy gave me inside. See, Petro T, truck stop, Route 132. That's the name of the town. Kanaweki, Quebec to Isle, Isle, uh, Isle Island, St. Bernard. And that's the name of the place. And basically, uh, we are right there on the right. And the, the St. Bernard Island is now in the middle of the frame, right? And so over here, top right corner you see it says 14.6 kilometers or 18 minutes in the car right uh, which is uh, just under 10 miles but we went we went around so it was longer let me just show you guys Google Maps okay yeah so that's Petro Key you see this is uh, Montreal is over here I am over here like on this side of this river, whatever it is, right? And this is 7.30, and this is 30, these are all freeways, right? And the park is over here. Uh, where is it? Over here. Saint Ile Saint Bernard, right? It's like it's not big, so I'm here, the park is here, right? Let me grab a pen. So you can watch the pen instead of my crooked finger. So one way was to go like this, and that's 14.6 kilometers. But when the Uber guy came, we went like, I said, take the freeway, and we went like this, you know? And basically there's trails, there's walking trails all over, like at the water, like this, eight kilometers, five miles. But when I arrived there, the guy just dropped me. You see this bridge? like. Over here, there's no bridge. This is like a service entrance over here. I found out later. I'll, I'll tell you how I did that. But this little bridge here is like, I don't know, 100 feet, 30 meters. And it's cars go in here. And this bistro, this restaurant in here, that's where you go in. You can have coffee, you can have a sandwich. And there's also an office there where they take five bucks Canadian, 350 US. And right at the exit, you go through the gate and that's your entrance. You see it says over here, it says Refuge, do, 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 fauna, something with birds, right? So that's like your clue that this is a, a nature reserve. And basically, only when I was there, I found out that they had some flooding problems. And so instead of all these trails, only this part is open. Only they said three kilometers. And over here, at, there's a barrier and that's it you cannot go further you know uh, and I say wait a second if it's only three kilometers out of eight how come it's still five bucks and the lady said well we still have all these expenses you know we have to fix the trails we have to feed you know the birds and the and the deer they have deer over there and I said okay and so I went there and I spent probably I don't know a couple of hours there it's like a really fascinating place it's like uh, you can hear so many birds in there 
uh, you know, small mostly, but it was very nice. Uh, and I saw deer in one spot. There's like, and they're not afraid of people. You know, they're just walking there. I saw a family of deer. Um, and then on the way out, you just basically have to walk very slow because otherwise you'll miss something or you'll scare them away, right? On the on the way out, I got lucky. I got this uh, red uh, feathered. I don't know, look like a to me it looks like a parrot, but it's all red. I saw it before in Cambridge, but I could never uh, photograph it. But here, I got lucky, and then I saw an interesting feeder, like a bird feeder, but it didn't look like a house. It looked like a like a small cylinder, and then on each corner there was like a like a flower, like artificial flower, you know, with a hole in the middle. And I'm like, what the heck? I'm standing there looking at it, trying to figure out what is that for, you know? And then all of a sudden, I, I turn my head to look at something else, and then I turn back, and there's a hummingbird just sitting still in the air with wings doing like, you know, 2,000 movements a second. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and I know these are considered incredible catches, you know, for photographers because they're so difficult to photograph. They, they fly at, I don't know. 200 miles an hour and basically and I'm just not moving a muscle I just pick up my camera and it was all on it was all ready and I shoot an aperture priority mode basically f5.6 spot metering you know it's all there uh, high ISO and I just raised the camera you know did maybe 30 40 shots and then the this hummingbird flew to the other side and basically what it was doing Turns out these flowers were for them. Like in the middle of that hole, that's what it was. It probably had some syrup or something. But this thing were just uh, hanging in the air. It's, you know, wings beating and it sits like a helicopter, right? Without moving and it just puts its uh, beak, nose, right into that hole. Unbelievable. And anyway, and so I went um, and then I saw this one over here. So this is over here you have to pay, right? So like I said, this is St. Bernard Island, but I I noticed this one on the on the map and you see these little broken lines? Those are trails, right? And so I tried to get the an Uber from here, but it said no cars available. I said, okay, maybe I'll walk to the main road, you know. So I walked here and then I decided why don't I since I'm I'm already here and this is near the river, why don't they just go and, you know, take this uh, nice walk in here. And then it actually it goes back, you see over here, goes back to this main road. Uh, and you need that to, to get, you know, back to civilization here. And so I did that and actually over here I had, so, I had more luck than over there because I'm walking on this trail. Well, first of all, that trail was... Uh, uh, one word I know, Fermat, Fermat, whatever, but it starts with F, and it says Park Fermat. Basically, park closed. And I, uh oh. And then I see some bikers, you know, cyclists coming in, leaving. Uh, what the heck? I said, hey, excuse me, sir, how can you walk in there? How bad is it? He says, well, there's water, so you just have to pedal fast. So I said, if I walk, well, he says, this. There's a spot there that has this much water and you cannot, you know, go around. Well, I took my chances, so I went there and I, I saw uh, like a stork, you know, like a very big bird in here. And then I saw one, a couple of them on the other side. That's where the park is, but you cannot see them from here because this area was closed, right? And uh, I tried to took, take some shots, but they were pretty far away. But anyway, so it was interesting, and then I come over here, right, and I tried the Uber again, nothing. Uh, I couldn't get a taxi cab either, and then the worst part is that my phone started giving me messages about the battery. And of course, if I was um, think, thinking more about how to get back to my truck instead of the, the birds and, and stuff like that I could have charged the phone because I on the way back I uh, in the coffee shop right I stopped and I had a sandwich and I had a beer very nice uh, French beer you know like a small glass and you know I'm enjoying life and I'm not thinking at all how I will be getting uh, back you know and so <laughs> so the phone 
is dying. There's no Uber, Uber. But I remember that that's how you get back, right? What the heck? That's how you get back, and I need to get here. And so, you know, since I grew up in Russia, where very few people in 70s uh, and even early 80s had cars in smaller towns, uh, so we either walked or we biked or we used public transportation. And kind of like, you know, that the first uh, Rocky movie, uh, First Blood, he just walks, right? <laughs> and that's what I did. So, from here, right, I went into the park, right, went like this, went on this road, went like here, then I hit this town, and the, the, it doesn't show anything over here, but these are all small towns here. These are all Indian uh, Native American territory, you know? It was kind of funny walking over there. And then I just stayed on this road. And then I saw a sign for this, for uh, 1530, whatever. And I just kept walking, walking, and... Just to give you an idea... Uh, hold on. How do we... This... Bistro here. Okay, see this uh, drop in right directions. Uh, my location. Well, I didn't walk like this, I, I stayed on this road over here, right? But look at this. You see this? 16 kilometers, 10 miles. So I'm not kidding you. So, that <laughs> no, okay, I walked over here because I went through the park. But maybe 15 kilometers, I don't know. Basically, yeah, I went like this. I just stayed on this road and I had the, uh, and it's all Indian territory. I was a bit scared that I might get into some trouble, but no, all you see is every 200 meters, like 600 feet, uh, there's a cigarette store. Cigarette store or uh, no alcohol, just cigarettes. Cigarettes, 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 and then gas. You know, Indian uh, no tax gas. And what's funny is that all the signs are in English. Uh, for those uh, familiar with Quebec over here, they, they're very strict about French. And whenever you see a sign, it's never just an English language sign, it's always French. And there's a law about the size of English and French letters, believe it or not, and so uh, there's some kind of percentage. Basically, English letters, when they have a dual language sign, must be much smaller than the French. And as soon as I walk into this reservation, everything is in English. You know, like, what the heck? Like, you know, you're so get used to, even after a couple of days, you get so used to that everything is in, you know, foreign language in French, right? Like. I don't speak it, I know a few words, but and then all of a sudden it's kind of like oasis of English. And I went into, uh, I saw cigarettes and then I look at the display window and I see that he also sells, uh, you know, drinks like Coke and Pepsi. So I went in, got some um, Diet Pepsi. And the guy speaks English with no accent, you know. So I think over there English is their preferred language. But it was kind of like interesting. And then I, I walk here, I went under this bridge. Yeah, I went under this huge bridge and I, I don't know what's going on. You know, my phone died. I cannot check my direction. I just follow the, this road. I follow this. It's called Old Mahawk Highway. And so I went through this town, this uh, Kanawaki, Kanawaki, this Indian thing. And then, yeah, I see this old, oh, Old Malone Highway. And it starts turning slowly, turning, turning, and then over here, then, yeah, I think I went like, uh, how did I go? I mean, it was confusing, and I was dead tired, and then finally, I'm walking on the same old Malone Highway, and then finally I start seeing big shops, and then far in the distance, I see a big V. So it was maybe like three kilometers. I, cro I, I walked on the huge bridge, it's like industrial area, some school bus stops on the other side, 
you know, and this is even though it's Canada, we don't have any guns here, but still, you know, you're walking kind of like with the reservation, you know, and all of a sudden I see a um, very aggressive looking school bus. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. A school bus, like a real school bus, followed by two cars, and the doors open, and I hear singing. And right above us, there's a huge bridge, there's 30, 15, whatever those big freeways and we under the bridge like industrial area concrete you know everything's broken and there's all these people start coming out of the bus all grown-ups people grown-ups and they all wear these uh, very long uh, clothes you know like even guys uh, wear like robes I kid you not so basically it was some kind of a church you know and then guys come out from cars and they are getting out of the bus and I'm thinking like I'm turning my head I look both directions I don't see any buildings whatsoever there's like a couple of houses again it's still Indian reservation like where are these guys going you know like I don't see a church nothing under a bridge maybe they were, maybe they were uh, doing something there was a river over there of course right <laughs> baptism I don't know Anyway, so then I finally made it out from under these bridges and the road gets bigger, bigger I see, uh, finally I start seeing trucks and then I see a restaurant, I try to go in, I'm thinking, okay, uh, I need to charge my phone, I need to charge my phone because maybe I'm walking in a totally wrong direction, you know, like, the phone is so, uh, because of the Google Maps, it's so, and I didn't, I didn't take my, uh, next time I'm gonna take my tablet even though the battery is not as good as on the phone, but there will be a good, uh, you know, protection against something like this. Because at least I cannot call from there, but at least I can see the maps, right? So anyway, my thinking is that, okay, right now I just need to find a place, maybe I'll pay somebody. And you know how those poor people in the airport, they're just looking for a plug just to charge their phone. And I thought I would just need to find a restaurant or a coffee shop somewhere and just sit there like for a few minutes or just uh, plug in my phone and just you know check my directions like I was already okay walking I already did like you know most of the most of the route but I was just afraid after all these bridges like you know what's going on but I kept to the, I've kept going north because I know there's a river there and I my, my also thing uh, the the thing I hoped to achieve was once I charged the phone even a little bit maybe I can you know check for uber because now I'm closer to the airport I'm closer to this uh, area right and the airport is right on the other side of the river and then finally I, I emerge from under these bridges and the road gets bigger and bigger there's trucks and far far in the distance I think I see a V lever you know V and I don't know if I'm hallucinating but I know in, in uh, the, they don't have them here in Quebec but it's a Valero, you know, Valero in the States, a gas station. But I see from far away, I see a gas price, I see, you know, diesel price. So that looks like a real gas station because until then, all I, all I saw was just like a tiny place with a mobile, you know, uh, bathrooms, those portable bathrooms and like a tiny kiosk, a guy just sits next to the pumps, you know, and, and, and they, they sell cigarettes, you know. And so I saw this far in the distance and that gave me some strength. Okay, so finally I see a real gas station. I'm pretty sure they should have, I'll buy some Coke, some Pepsi, something, and I'll charge my phone, maybe get an Uber or something. And I'm walking and walking and that thing is so far away. It was like, I'm telling you, it was like three kilometers probably, like two miles, just under two miles. But that sign was so big and I'm walking, 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 and it's still far away, and I cannot understand which side of the road it's on, because I was walking on the left side, and then I, 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 I think it's on the right side, so I, I cross, and then finally I recognize the sign, that it's not V, it's actually, it's actually that sign over there. <laughs> See that sign? It kind of like looks like V. See that uh, it says Petro T, right? And there's uh, it has uh, where the T is white, and on the side it's yellow because it's a circle, right? But from the distance, that thing looks like a like like a V. And 
that's where I came from. This road, basically if you follow this road for 15 kilometers, 10 miles, you, you'll get to that park. And that guy over there had cigarettes, right? Cigarettes. And turns out all this area, it's all Indian, all Indian reservation. Every uh, two, three hundred meters, the cigarettes, 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 you know? And <laughs> when I was maybe like, I don't know, 500 meters away, and finally I just, I realized that this is it. This is my truck over here. This is Petro T. I don't know, I had like a fit of, you know, laughing fit. I was so relieved because I thought I was maybe walking in the wrong direction. It's Quebec. Most people speak French, right? Except the Indian reservation. And my phone died. <laughs> Unbelievable, you know. But so basically, always have either a spare battery or take your tablet with you in case the phone dies or just. Make sure you charge your phone before you leave the restaurant, right? Like, I was sitting there drinking beer and eating a sandwich and I could have charged the phone because I saw the, the, the plug was right there. Ah, oh, boy. And I was so tired, but these guys over there, they have showers and there's a small hotel in there. And I thought, okay, either I take a shower because I was all sweaty, all wet. Either I take a shower or if the hotel is cheap, I'll take the, uh, the room for the night and then, you know, I can plug in my phone, my laptop and I can take a shower, right? And I walk in and I say, ask the guy, so what's the uh, average rate? He's, oh, it's somewhere he says, between uh, 110 120 dollars a night. I said, that's too much. I said, how much, how much is the shower? Uh, $10, but you gotta give me 20 bucks deposit okay but he gives me i said at least I'm, I'm hoping to get some soap and some towel towels for this price oh yeah so he gives me everything sealed in a in a in a plastic bag you know like everything's nice uh, soap shampoo three towels gives me a magnetic uh key kind of like the what they use in the hotels i go there nice shower very clean so i cleaned up now i feel like a human being again but this was an unbelievable experience. I'm still surprised how I managed to do that. But I mean, I was walking forever. I was here probably at seven, you know? So basically, normally you do what? You do uh, five kilometers an hour, three miles an hour, right? So, so I walked for at least three hours, you know? I had a big bottle of water. Then I bought two, small, uh, two smaller bottles of Pepsi. And I kept walking and walking and walking. So it was a good day. Uh, because I, I sit on my butt most of the time, so nothing is wrong with a little bit of walking now and then. <laughs> but next time, maybe I'll take the truck. And to finish this, here's the shots. Here's the best shots I managed to get out of those uh, out of this experience like from the pay, from the commercial park where it was five bucks and then the free one where I saw the the storks enjoy thanks for watching